everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual accepted student reception. We are so excited to be with you here tonight. Um, as you all start joining, please feel free to put in the chat um, where you're zooming in from. We know you're coming from all over the US and maybe even the world. So we would love to see where you're zooming in from and also see maybe if you have other Zags who are joining from a similar area. Claremont, California. Yeah, welcome. I'm also from Southern California. We love to see it. Awesome. As folks, more folks are joining us again, we are just putting in the chat where you're zooming in from. We're so excited to have so many of you joining us here today. And we want to see where are you coming from? Ooh, all over Washington, Idaho, New York. Keep it coming. North Carolina, Texas, we've got all the coasts represented today. We love to see it. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, as folks are joining, please feel free to put in the chat where you're zooming in from. We'll get started in a couple of minutes. Thanks again for everyone joining us. We're just putting in where we're zooming in from. We're going to start in about one minute. We, of course, want to be mindful of your time and are so appreciative of you um, zooming in from it looks like all over the U.S. Um, and we are excited to get to know you and to share more about Gonzaga. So keep the chat going. We want to know where you're zooming in from. Maybe you'll find other Zags who are living close by. Okay, we definitely want to be mindful of everyone's time. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation today. Um, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual accepted student reception for Gonzaga University. Thank you for joining us from all over the US and maybe even the world. My name is Alexa Gasky, and I'm a senior admission counselor here at GU and one of your hosts for this evening. You may have noticed that we are recording this webinar for those who are unable to attend or for you to view later. It's going to be posted on our YouTube channel and our website. We're also going to send it out in an email um, later this week. We would love to answer your questions, though. So throughout the presentation, please type your questions into the Q&A function, and we're going to have some of our colleagues answer them through the Q&A or bring them to our attention um, to answer live. I really want to stress the fact that we will only be answering questions through the, the Q&A and not the chat, and we're going to try to get through as many questions as we're able today. Um, so joining me today are several of my colleagues um, in admission and financial aid, as well as some current students. I'm going to hand it over to Aaron to introduce himself. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Aaron Donowski. I'm one of uh, Alexa's colleagues in the admission office. Um, I mostly work with students from Oregon, Southwest Washington, and Alaska, but I'm a Zag grad myself, and I'm super excited to be here with all of you. Um, looking forward to sharing this, the, the rest of this presentation and hearing your questions. And I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. Eli? Hey, everybody. My name is Eli Jenkins. I am an admission counselor at Gonzaga, just like Aaron and Alexa. Um, I'm a Gonzaga graduate as well. I will be um, operating in the Q&A function, so please feel free to throw those questions in the Q&A function. Um, and just really excited for all of you and congratulations um, on, it being, on being admitted to Gonzaga. Nevada. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome. I'm looking forward to this presentation with you guys. My name is Nevana Pool. I'm one of the financial aid counselors here at Gonzaga, um, and thanks for joining us tonight. And now from some of our current students, we'll start with Maddie. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited that you guys are all here. My name is Maddie. I'm a current sophomore at Gonzaga. I am from Spokane, Washington, and I am an applied mathematics major with a biochemistry concentration and minors in social justice and leadership studies. Definitely keeping herself busy. Um, we'll pass it to Madeline. 
Hi everyone, it is so exciting to have you all joining us. Um, my name is Madeline Archibald. I'm from Forks, Washington. I'm majoring in sociology and earning my elementary education teaching certificate and endorsement. Awesome, thanks so much. So before we get into the presentation, of course, this is a celebration. We wanna start with a huge congratulations to all of our admitted students. You are such a remarkable group of scholars from all over the US and quite a few countries. Um, we U students have an unweighted GPA of a 3.76 and are multi-talented with experiences in art, music, athletics, writing, dancing, scouts, debate, theater, robotics, part-time work, serving your communities, and so much more. And we are so excited to be with you here tonight to celebrate your achievements and also to help you learn more about Gonzaga. So Gonzaga was founded in 1887 and is a private liberal arts Catholic university in the Jesuit tradition. Jesuit education is world renowned for providing holistic development to the mind, body, and spirit. Gonzaga promises four key outcomes as part of that Jesuit education, academic excellence, developing into contemplatives in action, ethical leaders, and people who are for and with others. So throughout this presentation, you're going to notice that this development comes from both the academics as well as the student affairs side. Um, so as a starting point, the core curriculum is an essential foundation for delivering that holistic education. So all of our students take part in courses in composition, literature, speech, philosophy, religious studies, math, science, social justice, and this core really helps to develop skills in critical thinking, writing, and public speaking, um, while also helping students better understand the world and how to make a difference within it. If you haven't yet come and visited us here, um, we are located in beautiful Spokane, Washington, the second largest city in Washington state. We're really excited because it finally decided to turn into spring out here. Um, campus is 154 acres and it's located right along the banks of the Spokane River uh, across the water from the downtown city center, which is about half a mile walking or driving. The Centennial Trail runs right next to campus, so it's really easy to access it that way. Um, and your Gonzaga ID doubles as a bus pass for the Spokane Transit Authority as buses as well. Furthermore, the Spokane International Airport is located about 15 minutes driving from campus, so it's super easy to get back and forth, um, and students do not need a car in order to enjoy everything that Spokane has to offer. In the city, we have a really vibrant cultural scene that includes great restaurants, coffee places, shopping, concerts, minor league sports teams, uh, it's a great nightlife, and an awesome theater scene as well. I went and saw Hamilton this last spring um, and just love having access to opportunities like that here in our backyard. Uh, there are just over 700,000 people in the metro area of Spokane, and there's a lot of support for the Zags and Gonzaga overall. Um, it's a great place to access internships and jobs while in college, and also to just start building your resume during your college years and taking experiences, um, you know, that you're garnering here and applying those in cities all around the world after you graduate. We have four really distinct seasons here in Spokane, uh, and there's a lot of variety of activities that you get to enjoy throughout the year out this way. Uh, all around us are amazing outdoor recreation opportunities, and we have a bunch of opportunities hosted through Gonzaga Outdoors um, on campus that they organize camping and backpacking and kayaking trips. Mountain biking is minutes from campus. We have five ski resorts within two hour drive and 76 lakes. There's all sorts of amazing stuff that you get to do in our area and uh, really get to enjoy the Inland Northwest's natural splendor. Let's talk a little bit about academics for a second. Um, since as Alexa said, what we promise students is first and foremost academic excellence. We are a medium sized liberal arts teaching university with about 5,000 undergraduate students. There are five schools that students can study in and they offer over 75 academic programs. We really wanna make sure that we are challenging students but offering a lot of support at, to help you grow and make sure that you're the best version of yourself. With an average class size of 23 and a student to faculty ratio of 11 to 1, we're able to offer really great personal attention in the classroom. I know uh, anecdotally, my largest class when I was a student at Gonzaga was a class of 45. My smallest was a class of one. So uh, it spans the whole range there. Uh, overall, Gonzaga's faculty are phenomenal. The, all of them are really committed to supporting you as individuals. And for that reason, we were ranked the 12th best institution in the nation this year for teaching undergraduate students. 
In addition, overall, we're ranked in the top 85 universities in the nation, and we are happy to report that our students are excited to be part of the Gonzaga community with an over 93% retention rate, so students coming back to Gonzaga after their first year. It's one of the strongest retention rates in higher ed, so if you don't trust us, who are being paid to be here and speak with you today, um, listen to our students, the folks who are voting with their feet, um, and, and look at those numbers. Alexa? Yeah, so diving a little deeper into each of the different colleges, we're gonna start in alphabetical order, which is of course starting with our College of Arts and Sciences. This college covers everything from applied mathematics to writing, and it is our largest school. Jesuits really believe in learning by doing, and you really see that tradition alive and well at Gonzaga in the College of Arts and Sciences. There are so many opportunities to do research in the sciences and social sciences. Students and in integrated media have their own TV station, podcast channel, newspaper. We have multiple literary magazines. We also uniquely have a partnership with the University of Washington to deliver medical school in the Spokane region. Um, that Gonzaga delivers the coursework and the University of Washington manages the clinical placements. This has really helped provide a rich environment for students interested in the health sciences on campus with research, mentoring programs, and professors that work with both undergraduates as well as medical students. The next school is the School of Business Administration, which is ranked in the top 20% nationally with a top 4% accounting program. There's two tracks in the school, Business Administration and Accounting, and both offer a fifth year master's degree programs. A student in Business Administration gets a broad business background and then gets to tailor their degree by studying one of 10 different concentrations in their interests. There's definitely time to study more than one. For example, a student can do a double concentration in entrepreneurship and finance or marketing and international business or any other combination that they'd like. There are also eight minors available to students majoring in programs at other schools. So for example, a theater major can always do a minor in digital marketing. Occasionally throughout the presentation, we're also going to highlight some of these new buildings um, as it relates to each school. So as I mentioned before, we have a wonderful partnership with the University of Washington School of Medicine. This new facility opened up in the summer of 2022 and is our Medical Health Education and Innovation Center. It's 90,000 square feet um, and is home to so many new labs and classroom spaces available to both the medical students as well as Gonzaga students. And, it's going, and it is the home of our human physiology department, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. The next new building we're going to talk about is this building at the center, which is our Performing Arts Center, the Myrtle Wilson Performing Arts Center, which opened in April of 2019. So for all of our students interested in studying music, dance, theater, this is your state-of-the-art performance space. Um, but it's also important to note that any student at Gonzaga can be um, involved in the performing arts, even if you don't study it as a major or a minor. Next, we're going to talk about the School of Education. So here we offer majors in special education, kinesiology and physical education, sports management, community culture and language, and also credential programs for elementary and secondary education. The nice thing is that students have field placements all four years across various schools and classrooms in Spokane, so they get to apply and practice the theories that you're learning in the school here at, of education at Gonzaga. Sports management students also have to complete two internships before they graduate, um, and there's great opportunity to do so both in our city with the minor league sports teams that we have, as well as the connections we have up and down the West Coast and beyond. So it provides great experiences uh, for students interested in school and professional athletics. The fourth school that we have is the School of Engineering and Applied Science, uh, which is a top 40 school for programs with masters as the highest level available. We offer computer science as well as civil, electrical, mechanical, and computer engineering and engineering management, which is a combination of engineering and business with the option to proceed to a fifth year MBA, also offered here at Gonzaga. All the programs are hands-on, so there are nine-month senior design projects where you get to work with industry partners. Uh, you also have really phenomenal engineering clubs and um, opportunities to collaborate with the research that faculty members are doing across a variety of different disciplines. We have a robo-sub club that, with, that takes students from our computer science, mechanical, electrical, and civil engineering disciplines, and they build a robotic submarine, for example, and take it to engineering competitions all across the country. So um, lots of great examples examples of things that you can explore there. The final school that we have is nursing and human physiology. So they offer exactly what it sounds like, nursing and human physiology. 
The nursing program is direct admit and students have to apply as seniors in order to uh, enter into that program here at Gonzaga. But once you're in, you know you're in and you're good to go. Healthcare is the number one industry in Spokane. That's the benefit of being the largest city within about a four hour radius is people come here for healthcare. And so students get really phenomenal clinical placements, over 800 hours of clinical rotations, junior and senior year, working one on one with nurses in our area. Our students also have really phenomenal outcomes. So we have a 94% first time pass through to the NCLEX exams this last year, um, and just a really great network to connect with for postgrad. Human physiology, on the other hand, is really a deep dive into the human body. And so if you're interested in health careers, um, being pre-PT, pre-PA, pre-pharma, pre-med, um, pre-dental, uh, these are all really great spaces to explore through this major. The focus is on anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology, and students are required to do research projects as part of the major. And so while it's great on its own, it's also a really popular choice for students um, who have a, aren't really sure what pathway they they want to pursue and just want to have that deep knowledge and understanding of the human body. Another really exciting building, as Alexa has been pointing out so far, uh, this is the jo John and Joan Belier Family Center for Integrated Science and Engineering. We call it the Integrated Science and Engineering building around here. Uh, this space really allows for more collaborative research and projects between the sciences and engineering, as well as computer science. It has 16 different kinds of new lab spaces, and it only opened up uh, just this last year. So we're breaking it in. Students and faculty are really excited to have it, and it sort of completes our STEM quadrant on campus with SkyBridges to our existing engineering and science halls. Another really awesome special feature about a Gonzaga education is the ability to study abroad. 63% of our students study abroad, and the majority of students um, go abroad in their junior year, but some also go in the spring of their sophomore year. Our flagship program is our second campus in Florence, Italy, but we offer over 60 programs in over 40 different countries. All Gonzaga-sponsored programs are at the same tuition as Gonzaga in Spokane, and financial aid follows students to abroad programs during the academic year. Um, the academic life at Gonzaga is really part of delivering the three other um, key education outcomes we promise students, which is, of course, the development of ethical leaders, contemplatives and actions, and people who are in four with others. So student life also greatly contributes to this holistic education. So the next section of this presentation is really going to go deep into student life and development. Starting, of course, with the residential experience, Gonzaga is well known for having a vibrant, caring, friendly community that really turns into a second home for students. With 82% of our students coming from over 200 miles away and 49% coming from out of state and over 40 countries represented in our student body, the requirement to live on Gonzaga's campus for the first two years is really important. There is intentional community development in residence life through programming and activities. We offer living learning communities, which provide students the opportunity to live with people who have similar interests or goals. So for example, outdoor pursuits for students who are interested in outdoor recreation or learns to lead for students interested in leadership development. The LLCs, except for the transfer experience community, do require a separate application, and the priority deadline for that is April 1st, with a final deadline as May 1. Um, you can find detailed information um, at the website on the slide, which is gonzaga.edu slash LLC. A really big question we get asked a lot as admission counselors is about safety on campus, so we wanted to address that a little bit for all of you. Um, Let's just start by saying the safety and well-being of all the students on our campus and staff is very important. Um, physical safety is maintained by our campus security team, as well as a proactive emergency system called Zag Alert um, that'll let you know if there are any issues happening on or around campus. Students also have access to a safety app called Guardian on their phone, and you have to download that at orientation. Um, and as well, you'll also have a health center for physical and mental health issues that may arise during your four years on campus. So you'll have physicians nurses, psychiatrists, and counseling services available to you right here on campus, and then referrals out to the broader community for longer term care. In addition, we also have COVID-19 that we are keeping a close eye on and just making sure that uh, all of the different protocols that we've had to put in place in the last several years to ensure that in-person learning can take place can continue to take place. So the university continues to offer testing to students who are exposed or symptomatic, and you're guided through the protocols uh, if you test positive and have to isolate. Uh, and staff are also there to ensure that you have access to all the different on-campus resources that we have available to you. 
Speaking of student life and the importance of just the social environment on campus, this is the Hemington University Center. And so it opened in 2015, and it's really transformed the way that students interact and engage on campus. It's designed to kind of be the community hub, the to spark development and engagement with a variety of different resources and clubs and organizations. It has our COG, which is our all-you-can-eat dining hall, uh, as well as the Bulldog restaurant, Starbucks, um, the common areas. We have our coffee house is, is downstairs uh, that you can kind of hang out in. It's nice ambient atmosphere. The building, building also allows students to be get super involved in leadership. There are also weekend social events, dining opportunities, faith development opportunities through our Office of Mission and Ministry, global engagement through our Center for Community Engagement and, and um, Study Abroad, and much more. All of them are located in this really big central building, and it serves as a really great kind of go-to spot if you're trying to figure out how to get involved. And as Aaron mentioned before, while we provide great challenge in our academics, we do that with a lot of support. Gonzaga offers extensive programming outside of the classroom for that holistic development, as well as support for academics, faith development, health, identity, the transition to college, and more. So to highlight a couple of the programs on this slide, our disability office under the Center for Student Academic Success is for students with different learning and physical differences. Um, another frequently asked questions we get, uh, question that we get is about faith on campus. A little less than 40% of our students identify as Catholic, and the other 60% are from a variety of different faiths. We have over 30 different faiths represented on our campus, and all belief systems are welcomed and supported. Another important area to highlight is that of DICE, or Diversity, Inclusion, Community, and Equity. DICE is an organization on campus that lives in two offices, our Unity Multicultural Education Center and our Lincoln LGBTQ Plus Center. The offices offer educational programming, mentoring, support for underrepresented students, and a place of community and celebration. We have multiple multicultural clubs that help students come together in shared culture, and there's a union of all of these clubs that work together. Some of the special events coordinated by these clubs are the International Student Union and the Black Student Union Dinners, our HPIC or Hawaii Pacific Islander Club hosts an annual luau, and the um, Latin American Student Union also hosts their um, annual La Raza Festival. Another huge part of being a student at Gonzaga is seeking to cultivate yourself as a leader. Our mission at Gonzaga in part reads uh, to educate students for lives of leadership and service for the common good. So the Jesuits believe that students are, are made leaders and not born leaders. And we wanna see you uh, grow in your leadership potential through over 800 student leadership opportunities available on our campus. There are specific programs for leadership studies like the Comprehensive Leadership Program, the Payne Experiential Leadership Institute, and the Hogan Entrepreneurial Leadership Program. You can also, just get involved in student government and residence life in 140 clubs and organizations available on campus. Um, I'll mention the CLP program and the Hogan program you have to apply to your freshman year, while the Payne Experiential Leadership Institute program is open to anybody who is interested in pursuing it. Students are also just super involved in our community overall. There's a really intense emphasis on giving back and serving those on the margins of society. And we see that in our Spokane area. We wanna be making sure we're engaging and giving back. So every year, there are opportunities. Students complete over 40,000 hours a year of service, uh, whether that's in our backyard or all the way around the world. We also have a really great placement um, with, within different service opportunities after graduation. So as a fun fact, a few years ago, we were number one for, for the Peace Corps in terms of giving students over to that program for small schools. Um, and when we sort of reclassified, when we bumped up above that 5,000 student number, we were medium sized, uh, but we're still number nine in the nation for uh, providing alums to the Peace Corps, as well as Teach for America, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, great opportunities to build experience uh, um, as leaders and as well as getting involved in service. The other thing that I want to really emphasize for you is the preparedness that we have to help students after they graduate. So all of the academic experiences, the development of leadership, all the ethics that you're thinking about, the critical thinking skills that you're honing over four years as students here, uh, becoming the best version of yourself and preparing to give back through all your talents and gifts, um, that all is funneled through our Center for Career and Professional Development. Um, we have a first destination survey that we use to track successful outcomes. And this last year, 96% 
of our students had full-time or were doing jobs, had master's or PhD programs, or were completing long-term service within six months of graduation. So you can't get much better than that. Uh, the Career and Professional Development Office also coordinates a lot of programming to help you prepare for life after Gonzaga, whether that's help putting together resumes, whether that is just taking personality tests to understand what you might want to do. If you know exactly what you want to study or if you have no idea, um, they are there to help you in that discernment process and to help encourage you and help you grow. There's also over 1,500 alums who are signed up to connect with students to help you understand what you can do with different degrees. We have TREK programs that are um, different opportunities to connect with employers and alums in specific cities, including Seattle, Portland, the Bay Area, Los Angeles, Denver, Spokane, of course, uh, New York City, especially for our finance students, as well as London. So tons of opportunities to engage and really learn more. Finally, I think uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, all of this stuff that we've been talking about, we're really bound together as a community of Zags, um, in large part due to the, amendous, the tremendous and amazing school spirit that we have on our campus. Obviously the success of our men's and women's basketball teams, uh, as, but all the other teams as well, baseball, volleyball, soccer, golf, tennis, um, it creates a foundation where we identify ourselves predominantly as Zags. Uh, we don't have Greek life, we don't have a ton of different ways that we're kind of splitting each other up. Um, we just see ourselves all together as one big community. Um, and. We're hoping that things go well here in the next several weeks for, for our men's and women's teams. People will, you know, beyond just the sports, will they'll shout go Zags at passing tour groups. Um, we'll sign their emails, go Zags. It's a really, it's a big thing around here and it, it really binds our community together. So if you like basketball, uh, you're in luck because access to the student, for the student section is free for students and there's about 1200 or 1250 seats available in any given game. Um, if you show up early enough, you maybe you tent out overnight, you can wave to your parents on ESPN. Um, and there's also just tons of opportunities to get involved um, in uh, intramural sports and all the different athletic opportunities on our campus as well. Um, the fun fact that I saw posted in our fitness center the other day, we had more flag football and volleyball teams this year for intramurals than the University of Washington, Washington State, and the University of Oregon this fall. And we have a lot less students. So our students are really involved and love to have that as a source of building community. We also have the Centennial Trail that you can use on campus, as well as a ton of outdoor activities and opportunities to really um, just lean into finding your people and connecting with folks. And maybe you'll win an intramurals champion t-shirt, which are highly coveted on our campus. Now we're gonna pass it over to our colleague in financial aid. All right, we realize affordability is a top concern for students and families. Gonzaga has been considered a top value in higher education for many years due to the funding offered combined with the quality of the education. If you filed a FAFSA, you should have received a comprehensive financial aid package by now. The aid from Gonzaga, both scholarship and grant funding, is guaranteed until the student finishes their undergraduate studies. The student must maintain good academic standing with the university, which is a cumulative of 2.0 GPA. The FAFSA uses prior prior year financial information, which would be your 2021 tax filing data. If you had changes to your financial situation since then, such as a loss of a job, uh, fluctuating income, we recommend filing a special conditions appeal form. If there are younger students in the family in a K through 12 private school as well, we also consider that um, to use for the appeal form. We recommend applying for outside jobs the Gonzaga, or excuse me, outside scholarships um, as well. The Gonzaga student body brought in over $2 million in outside funds just last year. So it's really helpful for students. There are also monthly interest free payment plans available applications for the payment plan will be available in June. And finally, we do encourage students to take on work study job while in college, which would be about 10 to 15 hours per week. There are many benefits to working as noted on the slide. It is also nice for students to have connections with the university staff. We know when a student is sick, we can refer them to resources and we'll even celebrate their birthday as well. 
So you received an acceptance packet um, in the mail with this checklist that looks a lot similar to um, the document you see on the screen. Um, and it's really your guide to help you until you make a college decision. There's a lot of information and resources available on our website, gonzaga.edu slash accepted. Um, and to connect you with fellow admitted students, we really encourage you joining Zimi, which is a private app where you can chat with each other as well as current Zags. Um, we also really want to make sure you are all checking your email regularly um, and even pay attention to that spam or junk folder. I mentioned um, housing in the LLC applications, but overall students can fill out the housing application and apply to live um, in an LLC before committing to Gonzaga. The application is in your application portal while you where you found your electronic admission decision. Again, you don't have to confirm your enrollment or pay any of the deposits just to fill out that housing application, and we actually encourage you to do so sooner rather than later. If you do choose Gonzaga, the Office of Academic Advising and Assistance is going to register you for your first semester of classes. First year students fill out an academic interest survey and academic advising and assistance will build schedules over the summer. The academic interest survey will be available starting in April as students confirm their enrollment. Final schedules are released in early August, and for students who have credit from AP or IB exams or college credit from programs like Running Start or dual enrollment, those credits will be added to your account over the summer in time for registration to be finalized. So please be sure to have your scores and any college transcripts sent over to Gonzaga. Transfer students will also be asked to submit the academic interest survey and schedules are available within a couple weeks of the survey submission. In addition to filling out a bunch of exciting forms, there's also going to be a phenomenal number of opportunities to get involved on campus and kind of move forward your college experience over the summer. So first and foremost, we're going to have five summer sessions for new student orientation that are running between July 12th through the 28th. Um, and those are going to be two day sessions. We want you to choose one. So keep an eye on your Zag mail. There should be registration information coming out fairly soon about those. Uh, early deposits will be available for registrate for folks who have deposited and, and will be able to register beginning here in the next few weeks. Um, and registration for new student orientation is going to become available to you as soon as you confirm your enrollment at Gonzaga. So I would highly encourage you once you've made your decision to start thinking about which of these opportunities you're planning on using. We also offer a few extended orientation programs that are happening um, right before the start of the school year in late August. So there's three main ones and registration for all of them will open up on May 21st at 6 p.m. First is GOOB, which stands for Gonzaga Out of Bounds, and it's for students who have an outdoor adventure uh, kind of on their mind to build community with other folks. Um, you go ha camping, hiking, and rafting out in Montana for a few days. It's very fun. Um, there's also Bridge, which is a phenomenal program for BIPOC and first-gen students to start building community and getting acquainted with the different resources that are available for you on campus. It also connects you with a, uh, a mentor who is there to support you through your first year on campus. Bridge also, um, in addition to Bridge, we have our Embark program, which is a first year retreat run by our Office of Mission and Ministry to help students come together on, in faith-based reflection and community. So if any of those sound of interest to you, um, just keep an eye out for the registration to open up for those in on May 21st. And of course, a great way to stay connected and learn more about Gonzaga is by visiting campus and hearing from our students and faculty. We have the pleasure of being able to have some of our students here available for questions. Um, but the best program really for admitted students is Gonzaga Experience Live or GEL Day on April 15th. It is a treasured Gonzaga tradition for many admitted students. I know it was what helped me decide that I wanted to attend Gonzaga back in the day. Um, it will include an academic fair, sample classes, campus tours, a club fair, um, evening activities with current Zags. There is also a separate parent and guardian program. And so for details and um, to register for GEL, you can go to gonzaga.edu slash GEL. If you cannot visit um, on April 15, we also have daily visits and Saturday visits, as well as preview days throughout the spring. We would love to see you on campus on a day that's most convenient for you. You can take a campus tour, attend an information session, meet with faculty, and even attend a class. Um, all of our campus visit information can be found at gonzaga.edu visit.
We also have a variety of virtual opportunities to help experience life at Gonzaga. You can meet with faculty over Zoom. You can hear from admission counselors in our weekly information sessions. Um, in the coming weeks, we also have an in-depth virtual program, um, such as our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging series, which begins on March 20th, and a housing webinar on March 23rd. So to register for any of these um, virtual opportunities, you can go to gonzaga.edu slash virtual Gonzaga. Um, so I don't see any questions right now for Aaron and I to answer live in the Q&A, but I do want to re remind folks that we are here to answer any and all of your questions, um, including some for our um, current students. We're going to go ahead and transition now to our student panel. So if you have questions for our current students, please feel free to put those in the, um, the Q&A um, for them to answer out loud. They are our experts. Um, so in the meantime, while we wait for some of those questions to, to come in, um, Maddie and Madeline, can I please have you reintroduce yourselves, name, hometown, year, major, and also why you chose to be a Zag. I can start us off. So again, my name is Maddie Ediger. I'm from Spokane, Washington, and I'm a current sophomore at Gonzaga. Uh, I'm majoring in applied mathematics with a biochemistry concentration and minors in social justice and leadership studies. Um, at first, I wasn't really sure about Gonzaga because it's just that old school in downtown. Like I was used to it, used to the basketball games, no big deal. But then one of my coworkers um, at a donut shop that I worked at in high school who was a sophomore at Gonzaga at the time was like, let me show you around. And you walk around campus and there's so many people that you run into who are like, oh my gosh, hey, how's your day going? Who's your friend? How can I um, help show them around? What are they interested in? We happened to run into somebody who she knew who was a STEM major, which is what I wanted to be. Um, and was like, let me show you my research that I'm doing, come look at the lab. And that sort of giving, welcoming um, community that we have at Gonzaga is something that was evident from the first time that I stepped on campus. And now getting to be a part of that community and help grow it for myself is something that I would just never give up for the world. Hello, I am Madeline. I'm a junior here at Gonzaga, so it's my third year. I'm double ma or I'm majoring in sociology and I'm earning my elementary education teaching certificate and endorsement. And I'm originally from Forks, Washington. I love to say, I don't really know why I came to Gonzaga. It kind of happened just by chance. I wanted to go to a Jesuit university and this is what worked, but why I chose to stay at Gonzaga I really, like Maddie was talking about, I really love the community. Everybody is so friendly here. Um, and I love how, even though it's a really small, it's a really small school. So whenever I'm walking any place, I always run into people I know um, to visit with, but it's also a big enough school that I've been able to try out some really new things. I've never, you know, was really into band when I was in high school. And now I'm super involved in the music program here. And so I just love being able to try all these new things and having all these new experiences, but also it feeling like home um, and being in kind of a smaller setting. Awesome, thank you. And so like I said, please feel free to put all of the questions that you have for our current students in this chat. Um, they are our experts. Um, I know sometimes a lot, the big question that some folks have um, can be around housing and also the food on campus. Can you guys share where did you live um, initially, or where do you currently live if you still live on campus? Um, what is that experience like? And give us your honest review of what the COG is like. So my first year, I lived in an LLC. I lived in Learns to Lead, which put me in the Coglin Residence Hall. And oh my gosh, I felt spoiled. Not only was the community absolutely amazing, even now that not all of us live together, we have like monthly FaceTime calls where we're just like, hey, where's everyone at? Um, we'll go to basketball games together. It was an awesome way to develop community um, coming to a new place right off the bat. Um, and then this year I live in the Corkery Apartments, which is super, super fun. Um, three of my roommates I met in Learns to Leave, which was super awesome. And while COG is great, um, I'm a big fan of the brunch and make your own waffles thing on the weekends. I'm a big Cataldo girl, which is our second dining hall. That was my big thing after my labs got out on Thursday afternoons. I was like, I have earned myself some Cataldo mac and cheese. 
Um, so I'm a big comfort food person after a long day of classes. So Cataldo was the place for me. So just like Maddie, I actually lived in Coughlin my first year, my freshman year. I lived on fifth floor global citizenship. Um, my freshman year was COVID. My freshman year was 2020. And so I had a little bit of a different um, experience. But just living in a dorm, I loved how all of us, this was the first time that we had, you know, weren't living at home with our parents or our families. And we all just lived together. Um, we would go into the living room and just sit down and watch movies or do homework. We got really into Mario Kart Wii. And so there were like 20 of us that would take rotations playing. And those are still my lifelong friends. Those are the people I'm friends with now, three years later, are those people I met on Fifth Floor Coglin. Where I'm living now is the Corkery Apartments, like Maddie is. Um, I live in an upperclassman dorm. So I live in an apartment where instead of having three rooms of two, I have my own room and I share it with, and I share my apartment with two other people. This room is really big. I don't quite know what to do with all the space I have, um, but I very much enjoy it. I really appreciate it. As for dining on campus, I am a total COG fan. I love the wide variety. There's enough, um, there's enough like staples at the COG that it's never a surprise when I go. There's always something I can count on, like um, salmon on Wednesdays, so good. Or um, after church on Sundays, my friends and I would go get chicken and waffles, um, biscuits and gravy with chicken and waffles, so good. Um, so yes, I really do this year. I don't have a meal plan and I miss the COG dearly but it's good food. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I think we're a whole Coglin crew. I lived in Coglin when I was a freshman at Gonzaga, and I think so did Aaron. We were actually a floor apart, um, which is super fun. So thank you guys so much. We are popping with the questions. So everyone keep them coming. So we're just going to go in order that they come in. Um, so have either of you attended or been a part of any of the theater productions at Gonzaga? And if so, um, what was the experience like either attending or being part of that? I can take this one. So I do not participate in any of them, but I have gone to a couple of productions. I went to um, the musical last year. I go, I attend a lot of the musical performances, a lot of the jazz concerts. And I love the atmosphere because it's a lot of people from the Spokane community. And so there's always kids at these um, events. There's always family members and just people from the community. But it's also really fun because you most likely know somebody who's in the production, whether you know, you, whether you walk into it knowing that you're gonna know someone or not, you most likely will. So it's always fun to see your classmates or even your friends um, in kind of that different setting. I haven't attended the formal theater productions, but I have attended our guts theater productions, which is more improv theater. Um, those are such fun ways on a Saturday night. Tickets are only a dollar. Um, I dragged my sister along when she was on campus for fall family weekend. And I think that alone is what convinced her to apply to Gonzaga because they were just so funny. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and someone would like to know, is there an indoor track at Gonzaga? And if you can provide any more information you'd like to share about the fitness center. So we do have an indoor track at Gonzaga. It has a special place in my heart. Um, 11 times around it is a mile. So it's a little smaller than your traditional track. What I love about it, though, is that it goes around the outside of our like courts or our gym. And so sometimes there'll be intramurals going on. So maybe there's dodgeball or basketball or volleyball games going on. And people will go stand up on the track and actually look down and watch the games, which is always a lot of fun. You can go cheer on your friends, but it's also a great way to just go get some exercise. I love running around that gym or that track. Um, one time I saw someone who, what they would do to read their homework or to do their homework is they walk around the track while they read a book. I thought that was really, really cool. <laughs> Another part of the RFC or our fitness center that me and my friends love is the fitness classes. Um, for just $25 a semester, you can attend an unlimited amount of fitness classes, and we are avid spin attendees. Um, our spin classes are actually taught by fellow students, 
Um, so we'll go to classes that our friends are teaching um, after a long day at school, just kind of jam out to some fun music on a bike. There's also yoga classes, Pilates, um, you name it. Those are also fun ways to be fit. That's not just the weight machines. Awesome. And speaking of weight machines, we've got some other follow-up questions now coming in about the fitness center um, and just being um, any fitness and, and uh, running things in general in Spokane. So the first question is, is the gym usually busy or are there enough machines for folks to use? I've never had an issue going to the gym and not being able to find the machine that I'm wanting. Um, typically, if you go early in the mornings or kind of mid to day um, in between classes, then you are golden. Um, you can go to anywhere you want. Um, but even during those peak hours in the early evening, you can use whatever machine you're looking for. Awesome. And can you um, share any of the go-to running paths for uh, Gonzaga uh, students, both near campus or just in general in the Spokane area? When I lived in Coghlan my first year, I would just hop on the Centennial Trail, which starts right outside of Coghlan, and I would do a loop all the way down to Riverfront Park and back. Um, that, depending on how far I would go, would be a mile or just over a mile. Um, and it was a really pretty view along the river into downtown. If I was feeling it, I'd grab coffee while I was downtown, breakfast, whatever it may be. We also have a Gonzaga Running Club, which is really popular. And every Tuesday and Thursday evening, I believe it is, Gonzaga students all meet together and then go for a run. And they go on all these different trails together. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so kind of shifting gears here, have either of you, and, and probably not, um, but do you plan to or do you have any friends um, that have participated in any of our study abroad programs and can you share um, whether you have hopes to, whether you have already, um, or any of the experiences that some of your peers may have had? Yeah, I can start. Um, so Maddie and I, it's really cool, um, have two very different experiences with study abroad, but still both really amazing. So I have not studied abroad yet, but I am studying abroad this summer in Seoul, South Korea. Um, I came into Gonzaga really wanting to study abroad, but my major is very heavy um, course-wise, especially with elementary education, and so it didn't work out. But I'm able to go this summer, and what's really cool about my program is it's sociology-focused. And so when you come, you can say, okay, I really want to study abroad, Maybe it doesn't work during the school year, but I want to go during the summer. And then you can find something that matches your specific um, major oftentimes. And that's going to be the same for those semester programs. So I'm really excited. But Maddie just got back from study abroad or you're going. I've had two different experiences with study abroad. I did one of the more short term trips last summer through a program called Gonzaga in Montana. Um, which was an English and environmental studies based program where we were in Glacier National Park um, studying different land management tools, whether that was at the national level with the national parks, state based parks in Montana, um, or even being through some tribal wilderness areas and looking how different tribes um, manage their land. Um, so that was a three week course I did last summer. And then I'm going to Florence this summer through our Gonzaga and Florence program. Um, and I am just super excited with that. Uh, one of the girls who was living with us last semester is in Florence for the semester long trip. And she is sending me all of her favorite restaurants, her countries that she's been to, um, where I need to go over the summer, like where the good beaches are. Um, and so there's a whole crew of my friends who got into the uh, Summer in Florence program, and we are so excited to go. Awesome. Thank you. Bringing it back to Spokane, how often do you all go to downtown Spokane? And when, you, when you're venturing into downtown, um, what do you like to do? I am a big coffee gal. Um, so whenever I'm going into downtown Spokane, I highly recommend Indaba Coffee. Um, if you want to, it's walkable or it's a really quick drive downtown, or they even have more easier to access locations in Kendall Yards, um, but great coffee, great food, and it's also one of my favorite places to study when I just can't handle studying in Hemmingson any longer. I got to get off campus. That is my place that I love to go. 
my friends and I love to just go on walks. And so we'll just go walk downtown Spokane, go to the waterfront, walk around the um, walk by the river. There's also a mall downtown. And so we love to go down and watch movies at the mall. We also really like the Spokane community events. And so my friends and I, we went to pig out in the park, which happens every Labor Day, where they have all the food trucks and they have music. You can just go hang out. We also um, attend the Lunar New Year celebration every year. And that's something else that we did this year um, that's downtown. Awesome. Um, can you speak to what type of mission and ministry clubs that we have on campus? Um, one aspect of mission and ministry that I really love is our CLCs, our, I always mix up the acronym, but I'm pretty sure it's Christian Living Com or Life Communities. Um, but me and my friend are a CLC leader for freshman girls. And so what that means is we bring together a group of freshman girls and in um, kind of a smaller environment, we all grow through our faith together. Um, that is everyone from non-denominational non Christians, those who are more Catholic based. Um, and they have those for every grade, um, all genders, um, really great ways to find a small community of faith on campus. My favorite plug for mission and ministry, um, because we have so many different faiths represented on campus, um, one of my favorite things that they do is they actually have like a van. And so if you need to practice your faith someplace or your spirituality, that's not represent or that you need a space that you can't find on campus. They will actually drive you off campus to wherever you need to go. And I think that's something really cool and really unique that mission and ministry does for people. Awesome. Thank Another you. really, ooh. no, keep going. Another keep really going. cool part about mission and ministry that Madeline and I actually realized earlier this week, um, we met on sophomore retreat um, earlier this year. And so mission and ministry puts on a number of different retreats that are faith-based, that are not faith-based, that are for your freshman class, your sophomore class, all of which encourage community, either within a religious sense, without um, religion, whatever you want that to look like. Um, and then you end up meeting new people that you run into while you're giving tours over spring break. Uh, and it just helps you continue to develop community on campus. Awesome. So now switching back into a little bit of academics, um, are there any issues with getting the classes that you need in order to graduate in four years? From my experience, and I can really only speak to my experience, um, I have always been able to get into the classes I need to graduate on time. Sometimes that looks like not getting into them when you register, but talking to um, professors, talking to heads of faculty and being like, hey, I really need to take this this semester to graduate on time. Can you squeeze me in? And more times than not, at least in my experience, they've been able to make sure that I graduate on time. I'm in kind of an interesting boat because I'm studying across so many different disciplines. Um, and because of that, I have very a very rigid schedule, which I need to take my classes to make them work. Um, but one thing that I really appreciated about my advisor is when I was freaking out about not getting into biochemistry this last spring, and then they're only offering it in the spring now, and I was like, what does that mean for taking my upper division chemistry electives? They did such an incredible job of, one, calming me down and um, ensuring me that they were going to help me graduate on time, but helping me problem solve with how can we switch around your four-year plan? What upper division electives can you take without this prerequisite? Could we switch in some of your math classes? Um, and my advisor is a chemistry advisor. He's not a math professor, and yet he does such an incredible job of going above and beyond understanding where I need help, um, educating himself in those other programs, um, and helping me get where I need to be. Awesome, thank you. Um, kind of going back to, to dining on campus, um, someone wants to know what dining plan would you recommend for a first year student? You go ahead, Maddie. I'm not quite, I haven't had a meal plan in a year, so I'm not the best person to speak on this new meal plan situation. I think it all depends on what your priorities are. Um, in comparison, my friend Joe is an avid dining hall user. So he takes our unlimited swipes program. He eats their breakfast, lunch, and dinner, sometimes a snack in between. Um, and so for him, that plan works really well. 
For me, I am much more of a grab and go girl. I love using my bulldog bucks to grab a sandwich from the marketplace, going over to a Tori Sushi, which is just a block away, honestly not even a block, a little bit closer than that and grabbing dinner to go. Um, so for me, having more bulldog bucks and lower swipes really works. So um, what's really nice is you have the ability within that first week here to change your meal plan. If you are figuring out like, oh, dining hall is really where I need to be. Like I need more swipes or maybe I'm going to be spending more money elsewhere. I need more bulldog bucks. Um, so it just kind of depends on what your priorities are. Awesome. And before we get to our Zag swag giveaway, because of course this would not be Gonzaga if we weren't giving out free t-shirts. Um, our last question is, if you could describe Gonzaga in one word, what word would that be? Think community. I was going to say that. Um, home. Amazing. Thank you so much to Maddie and Madeline um, for sharing their expertise um, with us. Don't forget, folks, if you want to chat more with a current student, we have virtual opportunities um, throughout the week to, to get on Zoom and, and um, chat more with a current student to get their perspective. You can also do that on Zimi. But of course, as I mentioned, it would not be Gonzaga if you didn't get some free t-shirts. So um, on this next screen, you'll see some of our randomly selected lucky winners. Um, if you see your name on the screen, please in the chat message Eli um, with your preferred t-shirt size. And we would love to get that out sent to you, but we can only do that if you get us the t-shirt size. So please, please, please do, do not leave this um, event without messaging that size to Eli. And of course, we want to end by saying thank you so much for joining us this evening to learn more about Gonzaga. Huge thank you to my colleagues as well as our current students for taking time out of their spring break um, to connect with you all. Um, and we want to say a huge congratulations to all of our accepted students and their families. We are so excited to welcome you to our Zag family. And as Maddie put it, welcome you to our home. Um, if you have any further questions or need additional information, we would um, please encourage you to contact our Office of Admission. Um, I'm going to ask Erin to put the link to our Find Your Counselor webpage in the chat so that you guys can look at that. Um, our financial aid counselors are always available for students um, to, to connect with and families to connect with as well. Um, we're going to stick around. So if you have any additional questions for Erin, um, Nivana, Eli, or myself, we are here. But again, congratulations to our winners. Um, and please don't leave until you um, give us those t-shirt sizes and have a great night, everyone. Congratulations again. Awesome. As folks are heading out, I want to say a huge uh, thank you again to Maddie and Madeline in Nevada. You all are welcome to log off and enjoy the rest of your spring break or evening. Um, we really appreciate it. Eli, Aaron, and I are going to hang out just for a little bit to make sure all of those winners um, are able to, to get us their t-shirt sizes before officially signing off. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. So again, thanks so much, folks, for joining us. If you have additional questions that we were not able to answer tonight, I know there are some in the Q&A, um, but we do want to be mindful of time. Um, please, please do follow up with your admission counselors. We are always happy to either get on a Zoom and meet with you or to answer questions via email or over the phone. Um, so again, Erin um, put the link in the chat to find the contact info for your counselor. You can always um, do that online. Maybe you already have it. Um, and please feel free to follow up with us. Um, via email, we would be so happy to connect with you and get you all of the information you need to make your college decision and welcome you into our Zag family. And then Eli, once you feel comfortable um, having the majority of, of t-shirt sizes, um, let us know. We have three right now, so I think we've got a, a couple more to wait for. Okay, awesome, thanks.
And again, folks, we are recording this. A link will be emailed to you by the end of the week with this recording, in addition to the recording of our financial aid webinar that we hosted last week. Okay, everyone, thank you again so much for joining us. We are so glad that you were able to attend. Congratulations again, and we hope you have a wonderful evening.